Good morning. Pastor Sean here on uh, Wednesday, the 1st of September. Welcome to September. <laughs> Came up fast. Uh, anyway, uh, it's uh, Wednesday, September 1st, and this is your morning prayer. So let us begin. O oh Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Give glory to God, our light and our life. O come, let us worship him. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth. The heights of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hand formed the dry land. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Give glory to God, our light and our life. O come, let us worship him. All right, today we get into a new book, uh, Ephesians chapter 1. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, to the saints who are in Ephesus and are, and are faithful in Christ Jesus, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. In love he predestined us for adoption as sons through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of his will. To the praise of his glorious grace, with which he has blessed us in the blessed us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace, which he has lavished upon us, in all wisdom and insight, making known to us the mystery of his will, according to his purpose which he set forth in Christ, as a plan for the fullness of time, to unite all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In him we have obtained an inheritance, having been predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will, so that we who were the first to hope in Christ might be to the might be to the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in him, were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it, to the praise of his glory. For this reason, because I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and, the love, and your love toward all the saints, I do not cease to give thanks to you, uh, for you, remembering you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of him. Having the eyes of your hearts enlightened, that you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power uh, toward us who believe, according to the working of his great might, that he worked in Christ when he raised us from the dead, and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And he put all things things under his feet, and gave him as head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. In many and various ways, God spoke to his people bold by the prophets, but now in these last days he's spoken to us by his son. All right, so a few times um, in here, in the Paul's introduction to Ephesians, he mentions that we have been predestined, predestined, that God chose us um, well, actually, the, the cool thing is where he says, even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, um, which is a cool concept. <laughs> uh, because, you know, you think of, you know, creation, you know, when, when, when God created all things. Um, before he created the world, before really creation even began, at least the, the creation that we're, um, that we're told of in, in Genesis, he, he chose you, you know, not that you were created before the foundation of the world, but the whole impetus for creation was, was you, <laughs> was choosing you that to, to have you in, um, with him forever. So he, he needed to create, he needed to create the world and then us. Those, those whom he, he chose, those whom he predestined. Um, 
and is it's just it's this crazy wild kind of concept that um, you know God has been thinking about you <laughs> for that long, <laughs> that He has always had you in mind, um, which I mean is a wonderful wonderful thing, and um, certainly can be be a comfort to us, um, you know, anytime we feel like God isn't paying attention to us, that God doesn't care. Um, reading a text like this just makes you realize it's like, of course he knows what you're going through. Of course he cares. And he's carefully watching and, and, and standing by you during this whole thing, because you were so important to him. He chose you before the foundation of the world. Um, so you're, you're kind of a big deal to God. <laughs> That's always nice to hear. But this whole predestination thing is is a difficult concept um, for us to wrap our heads around. Not not really in a basic sense, but certainly when we start to really think about it. And um, you only really hear predestination when it comes up about double predestination, which is what um, Calvinist Christians believe in. And so basically the, the idea goes like this. If God predestined, that is preordained, chose certain people to be with him, which is what Paul said, he, he predestined you, he chose you. Um, therefore, God must have predestined others to be damned to hell. Okay, so that's that's the double and double predestination. If God, and the, the problem with this <laughs> is that Scripture certainly um, lays out that God predestined some. That those who will be with him forever, he predestined. Meaning he chose them. He, he selected them from before the foundation of the world. Okay, he chose those to be with him forever. Okay, and that's where the Bible stops. It says that and that alone. Well, the Calvinists take it a step further and say, well, if he did that then it stands to reason that he must have then predestined all the others to spend eternity in hell. Okay. And that is where scripture is, doesn't say that at all. It is just a, a, um, a jump from if this, then this must be the case. And the thing about that is, is, I mean, first of all, again, we, it's not scriptural. So we always want to go with a scriptural understanding of things. Um, but it's, oh, well, sorry, the, the train left the station there, the train of thought, and then it, <laughs> okay. So what was I saying? Um, so not only is it non-scriptural, but um, it also uh, applies to um, God, just something that's not there. You know, because you, you say, well, how can he, how can he, um, be sad about, you know, he doesn't desire the death of anybody or, and certainly doesn't want anybody to be apart from him. And yet he chose certain people to be apart. Well, he didn't, scripture doesn't tell us, tell us he chose certain people to be apart from him. Um, in fact, what the Bible is very clear about is that we choose for ourselves to be, con to condemn ourselves, that Jesus died for the sins of the world. Okay. So we choose not to receive that gift. We choose to condemn ourselves. And see, the opposite kind of goes with the, the Calvinists. They say, well, if, if you show, or not necessarily Calvinists, but if you chose to condemn yourself, then you must be able to choose to save yourself. So you choose to accept Jesus into your heart. And see, there, there are a lot of these like jumps in logic where we say, ah, the Bible says one thing, but it doesn't say another thing. But if it says this, then it must mean that... We, we can't do that. We got to stop at where the, what the Bible says. And the problem that people have with that is they say, but if he did choose some, then he must necessarily have not chosen others. Or if we're responsible for our condemnation, we must be responsible for our salvation. And the problem with that reasoning is, but you're not understanding how this works with God. Um, and you're not going to understand how this works with God. It's, it's the whole problem with free will. How can we have free will if God has already predestined us? Okay, if, if he has laid everything out, and, and even Paul alludes to in this, how he has a plan for the fullness of time. God has, has a plan laid out. Everything happens according to God's plan. God is in control of everything. Nothing happens that God does not ordain. Okay, so how can our free will function in that kind of a system? Well, then we don't have free will. 
Okay. <laughs> um, you know, we, we got to go with how, how scripture lays this out. Of course, this drives us crazy because we want free will and we absolutely need free will to be able to choose this, that, and the other. And well, obviously I'm already out of time, but we can't get into the topic of free will in, in this small little context or a setting. Um, but suffice to say that, um, it's, it's okay. You know, our, our will is actually bound. Okay. We, we don't have true free will like we understand it. Um, but that doesn't diminish anything. I mean, it's like, I love how the, the option is, let's see, we have a God who loves us, who chose us before the foundation of the world and has a plan for everything to work everything out ultimately to his good, or we have free will and we get to do whatever we want. See, <laughs> this is so much better. I mean, I think we can all agree. <laughs> this is so much better. But we want this so much. And um, that's where the problem is. I mean, the problem is in our hearts. Is the sin of our hearts cannot accept that um, we're not in the center of the universe, that we can't control everything in our lives, that we are not in absolute and complete and total autonomy to choose whatever we want. And, um, that's our problem. Ultimately it's, it's, I mean, that was the problem of Adam and Eve, you know, that desire to be God. And so, um, this opens up the discussion and I've got to, first I got to end our morning prayer pretty quick here, but this opens up the, the, the discussion of free will and how we can talk about it and, and see what God has laid out for us and see how much better that is for us and be able to say, you know what, Lord, I don't understand how this works, but I understand that your son died for me and I am in him and you are watching over me and you are guiding my path uh, and my steps and it is good. And that is, at the end of the day, what matters. That's what gets us through. Um, so hopefully as you kind of wrestle with this text a little bit and wrestle with that concept, um, you can begin to see, um, you know, the, the sin in your, our hearts that, that wants that autonomy, that wants that control. And we can just say, you know what, Lord, forgive me <laughs> and help me to, um, to cling to your word and your word alone so that I might have that peace that surpasses my human understanding, my human logic, my human desire to be in control so I can have the peace of saying I'm not in control. And that's a good thing because you're in control. So a lot of places you can go with this text today. And uh, so, yeah, <laughs> have fun with that. Let us pray. O oh Lord, our Heavenly Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, you've safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all of our doings being ordered by your governance may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now, taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. Amen. All right. Well, thank you very much for joining me today and starting off September with your morning prayer. Um, if you have any questions or thoughts about... Um, well, we started getting to predestination, election, all that good stuff. Let me know because it's it's a it's a pretty pretty deep subject. We might address it in the Bible study soon, so we'll see. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. Hope you have a wonderful, wonderful Wednesday. And until tomorrow, peace be with you.